recall that the degree of uh, competition in perfect competition in, in perfect competitive industry is uh, is at the highest level. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, the perfect is most competitive. I mean, perfect competition is the most competitive industry. Okay, but this week we move on to another market structure is a card of monopoly. So monopoly is a degree of competition in monopoly industry is at the lowest level. Okay, so basically these two market structures are kind of like two extreme cases. Okay, perfect competition is the most competitive industry, but this term monopoly is uh, is the most the degree of competition is at the lowest level. So why? So you 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 guys uh, you you guys must have heard about this uh, this term from your real life. Right? You guys uh, maybe know what is monopoly. Monopoly just means that in any given industry, there is only one single firm. So you fill the first blank. Uh, there is only one single firm. So this firm can control hundred percent market share. Okay, only only one firm. Only one individual from one, one single firm uh, can produce some kind of a special type of goods and services. Okay, so the so the, so this firm is a custom okay. So for consumers, that means so for consumers you don't have any other choices. So actually, actually in BC in Vancouver we have a lot of monopoly companies. Do you guys know? Like a rich company in real life in the current BC, like the Yamanopoly. And any examples? So, Jason, do you know which companies in Vancouver the uh, are actual monopoly? Um. But I mean, what you said? You guys know which company is actually a monopoly company in BC in Core. No, you don't, you guys don't know. <laughs> okay. So like a BC Hydro, right? You guys know BC Hydro. BC Hydro. So BC Hydro actually is the only is the only electricity producer distributor in BC. Like you and me, everybody, everybody in Vancouver, we pay our monthly utility bill, I mean, electricity bill to BC Hydro. You don't have any other choices. If you need to use electricity, the only choice is uh, BC, BC Hydro. And, uh, and I see BC, I see BC, if you need, if you drive cars, you need to buy car, like insurance, or mandatory car insurance. But there's only one issue, the only like like the only one seller seller of the core insurance in BC is called ICBC. You don't have any other choices. So you if you need to buy car insurance, you need to buy buy car insurance from ICBC. So these these two companies are, are, are real examples okay, of a monopoly company in, in our real life. Okay, so number two, the firm can be cut as a price maker. So last time all the firm can be cut as a price taker. So 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 what is a price taker? Who is a, who, what kind of a company can be called a price taker? You don't have any pricing power, right? You need to set the firm level price exactly equal to the market equilibrium price determined by market supply curve and market demand curve. If you review your uh, last week notes number eight, you see the uh, firm level price must be equal to the market level price determined by market supply curve, market maker. Right, that that is a card. So so that so so in that case, you don't have any pricing power. But this week, if you as the only seller in given market, in any given market, you can theoretically speaking, you can determine. You can determine you you can you you can determine how uh what is the price you 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 want to charge from the customer, so you can be called as a price maker. 
Okay, so in this case, you can be you can cut as you can be cut as a price maker. Okay, so number three. Uh, so we can see there are usually high barriers. There are usually high barriers for new firms who want to be a monopoly. High barriers. So why? So think about this. Okay, why? Why you are so special? Like why your company is so so special? Why your company is a, is a why is a so special? Why your company can be a monopoly company? In the chat box, you can got you you, you can get notes notes number nine. So the so the first common reason why your company can be a monopoly company is a cut of government power. So what do, do I mean by government power? So actually government support you to be a monopoly. So actually those are two examples we mentioned, BC, Trans, BC Hydro, SCBC, and one more, maybe BC TransLink. All these firms, all these companies, they are actually owned by, owned by BC government. So basically they are part of a government. In Canada, in, in Canada, those companies owned by government can be called as a crown corporation. Crown corporation means a state-owned co corporations. So, so you can actually you can understand why this company they can be a monopoly company. Yeah, because actually they are part of a government. Okay, the second common reason why you can be a monopoly is a, is a kind of resource control. So if you can control some uh, uh, special type of resources, you can control all the resources. Yeah, in that case, you can be a monopoly. Third one, economics of scale. So what is the economics of scale again? So we learned about this in notes number six. What is the kind of economics of scale? So economics of scale means, okay, if you produce more, so I write down, so I write down Q and uh, upward arrow here so q increase i mean when you produce more when you increase the quantity produced if a long wrong atc okay if a long wrong atc can be lower okay this is a cardiac nurse scale okay if you already a big size a larger scale company compared with those a smaller size company your average production can be lowered you, you have some other one cages compared with, with, with those, those smaller size of company. Okay, so if you have an economic skill, so gradually those smaller size of company, they have no conditions to compete with you because your average production cost is, a, is a super low. Okay, so in that situation, in that case, maybe those smaller size of companies, if you withdraw from the parking, so finally, you can be you can be a monopoly. Okay, so this is a kind of kind of skill. Okay, so last one for those high tech, uh, industries. So for those biotech industries, right? So like Google, Amazon, maybe Apple. You know, for those high tech companies, if you invent something new, so you you can call something called copyright and patents. Because 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 you you because you invite some 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 new products, so you as the only legal producer to produce the product. Okay, so these are four common reasons so why the why the firm why your firm can be can become a monopoly. So you see, so after we review all these four common reasons, you can understand the yeah, the barriers to uh because because it is so difficult for your firm to meet any one of these four conditions. So it is so difficult for a firm to become a monopoly. So in this case, in this lecture, there are, it, it is impossible for any new firms who want to be monopoly. 
it is impossible for those outside investors, new firms who want to enter into this industry. Okay, this is a this is a big difference between this week and last week. Big difference between monopoly and a profit competition. Recall that last week, because there are no barriers for new firms who want to enter into the industry. So this is a fundamental reason why the final why in last week the final competition outcome is a why uh, is ATC needs to be tangent with steaming curve. So everybody, every firm in perfect competition finally can only make a normal profit. Okay, so this is uh, uh, number three. Yeah, number four in this box, yeah, we begin to build our graphical model yeah, for a monopoly company, for a monopoly industry. So this week, uh, we no longer need to draw the side-by-side -side graph because last week the reason why we need to draw the side-by-side -side graph is that this is a firm has no pricing power. So the firm level price must be equal to the to the market equilibrium price determined by the market supply current and market demand curve. But this week you got pricing power. So you do not need to uh, have the left hand side market level uh, graph to, to find out the price. So you can determine the price for yourself. Okay, so, so 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 we only need to build just a one, just a single like a coordinate system. So we still need to label the horizontal line by quantity. Quantity. So we just label the horizontal line by Q and the vertical axis is the price level. So this week we draw our demand curve like this. Okay, so normally it's a it's a downward sloping curve. Okay. So one thing we can learn from this downward sloping curve is this: if the firm want to sell more products, you must lower your price. If you lower your price, you can sell more based on law of demand. If you lower the price, you can sell more, 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 more products. Some of you may disagree with me, right? Because some of you, some of you may think, uh, if we want to sell more products, so another thing we can do besides lowering our price, another thing we can do maybe we can improve our products. Yeah, just like Apple, like they introduce new products like every year. Now they are introducing. For example, the next generation of iPhone is called the iPhone 15, right? They are introducing the new products every year. So, so they are kind of improving their products to try to attract more customers. Right, some of you, so, 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 so may think, yeah, we can, we can do that. We can improve our products and services just like Apple to attract your customers. But, uh, but Apple isn't a monopoly. Yeah, Apple got a lot of, they have a lot of competitors like a Samsung, like a blah, blah, blah. They, they have a lot of competitors. Apple isn't a monopoly. Right, so as a monopoly, you already got a 100% market share. You already can control the market. So you don't need to, you don't have any intensive to make your products and services better. You don't have, you don't have that intensive because you face no competition. You have no competitors. Okay, so you don't need to improve your products. So how you attract new consumers, the only thing you need to do is just lower your price. Okay, so the demand curve is a downward sloping curve. Okay, next step, let's move on to next page number five. So next uh, curve I want to add into the graph is called the marginal revenue curve. So how I can add a marginal revenue curve? In this box, the student in this box, we add your marginal revenue curve as a bisector line. You guys know what is a bisector line, right? bisector line of the demand angle look like this 
Okay, first your marginal revenue can best be the buy sector line of the demand angle, angle here. And you need to extend your marginal revenue curve below the horizontal axis. So make, making, making your marginal revenue curve has its own negative range. Okay, extend your marginal revenue curve below the horizontal line, horizontal axis, and we label this one by MR. Okay. Okay, so after you've done this, let's turn to the next page. Let's see, let me explain yeah, for you guys yeah, why the mar why the marginal revenue curve must be the buy sector line and why you extend, you need to extend the marginal revenue below the horizontal axis. Let's, let's, let's have a look, let, let's have a look for this table. So the first column is called the price column. Because you got the pricing power, you can set your firm level price, right? So you can set your price. It's totally up to you. You can determine how high is the price. You can set your price equals to six, equals to five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so let's see. So when you set your price equals to six, six dollars per unit, so the quantity demanded equals to zero. Nobody want to buy your products. So that means you set your firm level price maybe too high. So nobody want to buy your products. Some of you may wonder, yeah, the, the company, if the, if the company already is a monopoly company, how come the quantity demanded could be zero? It's a pretty weird, right? How, how, the, how come the quantity demanded is zero? If the company already is a monopoly, is that can be happen? Is that possible? Actually, that can be happen, right? Because because we did mention that the, the monopoly companies they produce necessary goods. We don't have this assumption. We don't have this assumption. We never mentioned. We didn't mention. Okay, the, the, the company is a monopoly and it's producing something necessary for the general public. Okay, so if you set your price too high, like $6 per unit, nobody want, 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 want to buy your products. Okay, so QD actually can be equal to zero. Okay, so if QD equals to zero, total revenue, total business revenue equals to price times the quantity. So six times zero equal to six. Uh, equal to zero, sorry, my bad. Equal to zero. Okay, so in, in this case, you do not need to calculate what is a marginal revenue. Okay, we mentioned how you can sell more products by lowering your price but we do this step by step. Like the first step, you just lower your price just by one dollar. So you decrease the price from six to five. So given the price equal to five, how many units you can fill, you can produce, you can fill to customers just one. Okay, so the second row, so we P times a Q, so it's a five dollars. You totally make, can make it five dollars. So then what is the marginal revenue for the first unit? Your marginal revenue just is a, this is an additional money you can make by, by producing one more unit, by producing, by selling just one more unit of your product. So we do five minus zero, so you equals so five. It's so you equals so five. And, and the next row, next step is a key. So just imagine another situation. What about if you set your price equal to four? Okay, so the, the table tells us show, 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 show that, okay, when the price equals to four, you totally can fill two units. 
Okay, so two times four equals to eight. And eight minus four equals to three. Okay, so, so the key here, the key is here, is you need to set a unique price for all units sold. Okay, so if you totally can steal two units here, I'm not talking about like you 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 steal the first unit for five, second unit for four. You cannot do that. If you want to lower the price, you must you must set a unique price level, like the same price level for all customers. Okay, so if you lower the price, you need to what you need to set a unique price like. You sell the first unit for four dollars, second unit for also for four dollars. So two times of four equals eight. Eight minus of five equals of three. Okay, let's have one more example. You lower the price by one more dollar. So currently the price is three dollars per unit. And the QD here equals three units. Okay, so this time you do three times the three. So totally is nine dollars. But how you can get one here, nine minus eight equals one. Okay, similarly, you can feel all this table, you can understand how we can get all these numbers. You see, finally, your marginal revenue even can be a negative number. This is a reason why I mentioned, why I said you need to extend your marginal revenue curve below the horizontal axis. Because based on this number, you see marginal revenue curve has its negative range. Okay, because of eight minus nine equals negative one, and four minus eight equals negative three. Okay, and the last step, last step, you just compare the QD and MR. You just compare these two columns. What you got? So you can you can tell right you can tell clearly you can you can you can figure out the slope of a marginal revenue curve is bigger than demand curve because with the change in the price level you see every step marginal revenue curve view decreases by two units two units two units every time every step you lowering price by one. You lower the price by one unit, the marginal revenue will decrease by two units. But the, but the QD here just decreases by one unit. You see, so the slope of a marginal revenue curve, graphically, the slope of a marginal revenue curve should be should be higher than two times larger, be more specific, compared with the slope of a demand curve. This is a reason like why the marginal revenue curve is falling faster than price and eventually becomes negative. Okay, so this is a number of five. Yeah. So that is a reason you got a separated your marginal revenue curve. This is a totally different from last week. Last week, your demand curve equals a marginal revenue curve. They are like a coincidence to each other. But this time, once again, you got a separated marginal revenue curve. It's lower than the demand curve, and it's a bisector line of the demand angle. So far, any questions? I'm, I'm talking about like why why you have a separated marginal revenue curve. Like in that's a page, the add of marginal revenue curve. Like look like this. You you have you got a separated marginal revenue curve because the slope of a marginal revenue curve, okay, is bigger than the slope. Is higher than the slope of a demand curve. Okay, so 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 with the bigger, so with a higher level slope, your marginal revenue curve is falling faster than the demand curve. Okay. Okay, so if no questions, let's move on to number six. One more feature, okay, one more feature for monopoly is a monopoly firm 
eventually always producing the elastic range of a dimming curve. So we learned about this in notes number three, when we learn about elasticity. So where is so-called elastic range of a dimming curve? Do you guys remember? We learned this, we learned about this in notes in the what in? Oh, you, well, where is the elastic range? The upper half a part. The upper half a part. So how you can find upper half part? Graphically, you you just find roughly. Now roughly, you just find the midpoint of this maker. Okay, the upper half part is here. So we call this part as E D greater than one. So the midpoint, okay, is that is the midpoint, the E D equals to one. The lower half part, okay, is called the inelastic range of the DMA curve. So maybe we need to review why the upper half part is called the elastic range. Elasticity, elastic, relatively elastic means, means uh, like uh, currently the customers, uh, they are care about, they are sensitive about price change. So how you can prove that the upper half part is called, is called the elastic range? So let's uh, do a kind of an experiment. So as a firm, when you produce that here, Okay, so when you produce I mean, at this point, so when you set your price equals to here and the Q equals to here, when you produce at this point, so the corresponding price is, is here. We will call them as a, because this point has a P number one. So the corresponding quantity is called the Q number one. Okay, so P times Q. So this is a shaded area. This is a shaded right area. It's a card of total business from you. So let's do an experiment. So let's see what if it happen if you lower your price a little bit. So let's change in another color. Let's do another shaded area. Okay, so so we can compare, right? So, so one conclusion we can make here is when you lower the price, so you lower the price from P number one to P number two. Okay, when you price, when you lower the price from P number one to P number two, you see quantity demanded will increase. And P times Q, you do the multiply together, you got a new shaded area, a blue shaded area. So you just compare which one is bigger. So, 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 so naturally, so, so obviously the blue shaded area, the business from you, you may, you can make, okay, when you set the price equals to P number two, is bigger than the right shaded area, right? So we can get, so, 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 so the experiment, what we learn from this kind of experiment is, now if we lower the price, so total revenue, if we lower the price, Total revenue will increase. So that means that means ED going to the one. That means the customers they are care about price change. They care about price change, they are sensitive to price change. So when so currently when customer currently when customer got a price signal showing that oh the equilibrium price has been lowered. So they will produce, they will buy more. So, so, so the total revenue will increase. Okay, because of the percentage change, like they, they change a lot of their, change their consumption behavior by a lot. Because they care about prices, the price is signal. They want to save a lot more money. Okay, because the once again, because the blue area representing the total business revenue when you when you lower the price is bigger than the right shaded area. 
representing total business revenue when you set a higher level relative speaking higher level price. So that means ED greater than one. Okay, so 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 in notes number five we mentioned. Okay, so far the only thing a uh, a monopoly can do for attracting new customers is to lower their price. So put these two things together, you can understand why monopoly actually they only produce in the elastic range. Just like what I did here. So these are two uh, rectangles. That right, shows that when you lower the price, only in the upper half part, when you lower the price, you can make more money. Right, in the, so, so they never produce in the inelastic range. Because in the inelastic range, if you do the same experiment once again in the inelastic range, you will lose some money. In the inelastic range, you need to increase the price for making more money. So let's write down. So in the inelastic range, lower half part of a demand curve. So you should increase your price. Total revenue will increase. Customer ED less than one. Okay, so they only produce in the upper half a part of, of your demand curve. Okay, so this is a, this is another fix. Questions? Any questions? No questions. Okay, no questions in uh next the big box here. Yeah, we uh, here we finish it. Well, we draw the. We add two some 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 other cost curves okay to finish a complete uh complete yeah, graphical model for the monopoly industry. Okay, let's build a new coordinate system. Okay, so we label the horizontalized due by quantity. And the vertical gas is a steel buffer. Okay, first step, first step is the demand curve. You do a downward slope in demand curve. You label this curve by demand curve. The second step, as we just like what we did in the last section, you add a buy sector line, once again, buy sector line of your demand goal, and extend the marginal revenue curve below the horizontal line. And you label this one by marginal revenue. So you got the intersection here, the intersection of your marginal revenue curve and the horizontal line here. Okay, one more feature, one more feature for this graph is, is if you really, if you really roughly yeah, make your marginal revenue curve, roughly as a bisector of this demand angle, one more feature is, okay, you add one more point. By the way, before that, you add one more point, you find the midpoint of your demand curve. So you got two points here. So if your marginal revenue curve really is the bisector law of your demand go here, so these two points, these two points, they are vertically corresponds to each other. I mean, if you if you if you actually connect these two points together, you can get a vertical line. Okay, so this is a midpoint of a demand curve. So why is this point is very useful? Because the next step we want to add our MC marginal cost. Because we need to use the formula. You because we need to use a formula. Yeah, you say is a is a which is a MR equals MC to find the optimal production level. Okay, so we just add MC. We just build MC into the in, in, into into our model. So you need to make sure you, you need to make sure uh, the intersection, 
of your marginal cost current demand curve. This is this is a main point. Okay, you, your MC really needs to go through the, the, the demand curve, through the, through the midpoint of a demand curve. Okay, and then the next step, you find the intersection here. Because you, 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 you need to produce at a VR MR equals MC. So this point is a VR MR equals MC. Okay, then from here, you go down. Okay, then you can find the so-called optimal production level. Okay, when you produce it here, the total profit has been maximized. So the next step, where is the price? Where is the price? Make two decisions, how many units you produce and uh, the, how high is the price? So, so to find the price, you extend this vertical line until you can attach to the demand curve. You got another intersection. And then you turn left because the demand curve determines the price. So you turn left. But you label this from IP star. So D equals the price. Okay, so when you got, once you done this, you got your price, you got your quantity, so P times Q, so the area of this right is, uh, now is, is called a total business revenue. So I need to add a label. So now this is a card total. Round use. All this area. Ultimately, as a business owner, you, you ultimately you care about what is a real money, like net profit you can make. You not only care about how big is a total business revenue, right? Because you, you 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 want to make a real money, like you want to make a net real profit. So you need to consider what is the total cost. So how you in this graph, how you can find the total cost. So we need one more curve. Yeah, we need one more curve. It's a, it's a card. ATC, to build ATC into the model. Oh, I'm going to 
Okay, you got two intersections here, right? You plot one more point between these two points, roughly in the middle. Yeah, between this point, you just plot another point, then light this point to be the minimum point of your ATC. And you label this from the ATC. Okay, that means if you add ATC look like this, okay, you got to, you, you, the intersection, you find another point, intersection of ATC and a quantity law. Okay, ATC and a quantity law. So from here, you turn left. Okay, so this is a card, a portable card of pre-unit. Then now you can find the, the total business revenue should be higher, should be bigger than the uh, total cost. So where is the net profit? Let's change it another color. Okay, like a green part, like a green shade in here where this is net profit. That's it. Okay, once you're done this graph, you can feel uh, all these are four steps, all these are four key steps. So how you can be, you, when you do the real examination, how you can, yeah, just like what I did here, how you can draw this graph by yourself. So first step, once again, using MR equals MC to find the optimal quantity, right here. Second step, you just extend this quantity line, like a vertical layup. So until you can meet your demand curve, you got intersection. So from this intersection, you turn left. This is how you find the profit maximizing price level, like the best price you should charge from the customer. And the third step, you just add ATC here, like, like between these two intersections, kind of in the middle point, make this a point to be the minimum point as your ATC, right? So use this point as a reference point at your ATC. And then you find the intersection of the quantity line and ATC. So from this point, you turn left. So label this point by total cost per unit. Okay, and then you can get this green yeah, right, uh, rectangle. So representing the total net profit. Okay, first steps. Okay, for the teachers, you just follow these first steps. You can build this graphical model by yourself. Any questions? No questions. Okay, no questions. Next part, yeah, we need to evaluate this. Uh, from the perspective, from the whole society, from the perspective, simply speaking, from consumers, do you guys really like this market strategy? If you are a consumer, you, do you want to buy the goods and services from a monopoly market? Should be should be no. Huh? Your answer should be no, because the market isn't a so-called efficient market. So in November seven, we learned yeah, well, well. Uh, what kind of a market can be called as efficient market? 
if the market system, if the market structure can bring out maximum higher level total social welfare, total social economic surplus, then the market is said to be a efficient market. And we learned two specific kind of conditions. Okay, to identify to 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 tell whether a market structure can be called as efficient market. The first one is called allocated efficiency, and another one is called product efficiency. If in the final market outcome, if at the market equilibrium, if a price can be equal to MC, then the market is called the allocated efficient market. And if the price can be equal to minimum ATC, then the market can be called as product efficiency. But back to the graph model we did it today. So clearly you can tell the price level higher than those two values, higher than both ATC and MC. Right, vertically on the vertical axis, so price like this much high and various ATC, various minimum ATC is here. So price vertically like higher than ATC, right, for sure. When you, when you produce a here, we are saying MC, MC is a here. You see price is a higher than MC. Okay, so based on these two kind of a comparison, you can tell that the, the market for sure 100% isn't the efficient market. I guess the monopoly, they charge, they, they make their price too high. Higher than ATC, higher than ATC. And they produce a lesser quantity. So how I can tell they produce a lesser quantity? I mean, compared with the perfect competition. The fundamental difference between this graph and the perfect competition is in perfect competition in those number eight, the MR exactly equal to demand curve, like a coincidence, like they are together in, in those number eight. But this time, you got the pricing power. And we mentioned the story that you, you if you want to attract new customers, you just say, you need to lower the price. If you lower the price, okay, to set a unique price level for all customers. Into, you need to lower the price for all customers. That is a reason why you got a separate demo, right? So if you push back your MR curve back to the demand curve, so just imagine, I mean, just imagine if the demand curve still was equal to MR, then you can kind of convert this graph back to perfect competition. If, if your demand curve still was equal to MR. Okay, so if a demand curve still was equal to MR, how, where you should produce, you, you always produce with your MR equals MC. So the MR equals MC, the intersection is here, exactly the middle point of a demand curve. And you go down. Okay, so that means you should produce that here. If you still, we are in perfect competitive form. Okay, we label this one by QC. C means a competition. So where is the price? The price is here. We label this one also by PC. C means a perfect competition. C means a more competitive. You see, by joining these two lines, you can you can clear, you can you can tell, you can you can compare, you can do a comparison between perfect competition and monopoly. So as a monopoly, they produce, they produce a lesser quantity and they charge a higher price. That is the reason why this market isn't an efficient market. They produce too little things of whatever society and their prices are very high, higher than perfect competition. So that is the reason why you as a consumer, you don't like monopoly. You should prefer your yeah, buy by goods and services from a profit competition market. Mm -hmm. So you produce a lesser quantity, right? So the this triangle here.
can be cut as a dead weight loss. All is a part. All this triangle can say can be cut as a dead dead weight loss. Just label it by yeah. This is an apple story. If you have no questions, uh, let's move on. Apple four. Uh, if we in this graph, if you, if if we call this graph as a kind of a traditional way for for figuring out where is the price or for pricing your products, actually as a monopoly, if you got a hundred percent uh, pricing power, you have a new way. Okay, you have some special way called price discrimination. To, to, to price your products. So what do, what do you mean by price of digital combination? You, you kind of just customize a different price level for different customers. So based on their WTP. So WTP here is a, is a stands for WTP variable this in those number four, right? WTP here means refers stands for willingness to pay. In some other textbooks also can be called as a reservation price. Reservation price or WTP is the highest price a consumer is willing to pay for your products. If you have this information, as a business, if you know all the consumers, what is the highest price all the consumers is willing to pay for your products, so what you can do? You can customize, you can charge a different price level for different consumers. It just based on just based on their WTP. If some if someone is willing to pay higher price for your products, let's say two hundred dollars for your bubble tea, or you just you just can charge two hundred dollars from he or she from this customer who is willing to pay two hundred dollars. Okay, maybe another guy even 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 is willing to pay even higher level price three hundred dollars. If you can go to this information, if you can measure you know, what is a WTP, uh, uh, all customers is ability to pay. Right? If you have this information, you can you can just uh customers, you know, different price level for different uh for different people. But the the, the difficulty. Okay, the biggest the, it is so hard to apply price discrimination theory into real business world. The difficulty really lies on you don't have such information, right? Because the consumers they want to tell you what what is what is their WTP. Okay, but theoretically, if you can do this, you can what you can increase your profit. You can make more money. You can increase your net profit significantly. 
So let's uh, draw a graph to prove that why if you do price discrimination, you can make a lot of money. So let's have a graph. There's a biggest difference this time. Okay, your marginal revenue credit, your D anchor should be should be together. I mean D equals to MR. Last graph. In last graph, why you have a separated marginal revenue curve? Because if you want to, if you need to lower the price, you need to lower the price for all consumers. You need to set the unique price level for all customers. But this time you don't need to do that again. Because we are doing because we are doing different prices for different consumers. Okay, so in this case, D equals MR. And the next step you just find the midpoint. Still need to have your MC go through the demand curve. Like, like it goes through the midpoint of the demand curve, it goes just from the MC. So the optimal quantity is here. The labels is from the Q star. Okay, we need to add ATC. ATC kind of put it here. Okay, then you got an intersection here. It's an intersection for the Q between quantity line and ATC. So from here, you turn out. Okay, so this one is a card, once again, the card, total cost per unit. Okay, then this time, where is your profit? Where is the profit? So this time profit is all this area. Because in this graph, the most most important thing is if if the monopoly from they do price discrimination, the most most important thing to memorize is that there is a no consumer surplus. If they do price discrimination, because how you, how consumers can get a consumer surplus if the if their WTP actually is higher than the actual price they need to pay, but but if the monopoly they do price discrimination, everybody everybody is every consumer surprise. Uh, actually, I mean they paid it to the consumer actually equal to their WTP, right? So no consumer surplus can be can be happening in this graph. Okay, so all this shaded area now is profit earned by this monopoly. So no customer surplus. Before they do price discrimination, they need to set a unique price level like here. Okay, so this triangle, the area of this triangle actually was called the customer surplus before they do price discrimination. But after they do price discrimination, all this part, all this triangle, now is a part of a total profit earned by, earned by the company. Okay, so you see after they do price discrimination, profit has been increased really, really by a lot.
and if you have no questions, as a really the very last part of today's lecture, we're going to talk about how the government regulate the monopoly. Because uh, because you have you have because uh, you already understand the, the monopoly is a, is a, is a very bad. So we can see monopoly is a very bad market structure for consumers because they produce a lesser quantity at the same time so they charge a higher price. Right, so it's a, it's a very bad market structure. So in this case, maybe we need a government in the place to regulate, to fix this problem a little bit. So as a government, how you regulate, how you can fix the problem. We mentioned the problem is that they charge a higher level price. Okay, so maybe the uh, most straightforward is that the way you fix the problem is you ask them, as a, as a government, you just ask them to lower their price a little bit. So two different ways. Okay, if you ask the monopoly as a government to lower the price, to their MC level. If you do P equals MC, so you are doing something called a social optimal pricing. If you ask the company to lower their price down to their ATC level, so this one is called a fair retail pricing. Okay, so if you do P equals ATC, if you ask them, oh, into a loyal price and down to your ATC level, so the firm will reach to their so-called break-even point. Because the P equals ATC, that means the break-even just means they make no money because the price, right, per unit price already equals the average total cost. The money you make actually equals the cost you, you, you produce, you need to pay for producing this unit or product. So this is a kind of break even. Break even means you make no money, you lose no money. If you make no money, you lose no money, that means you can make no more profit. Okay, so no more profit once again. Refers to situation in which E come profit so E comes to zero. Okay. And uh, uh, one more thing about number A, if you review a little bit your graph, if you review a little bit the graph you did in the first box in the standard monopoly model, so you can you can find out in the elastic range, in the elastic range in the upper half part of the demand curve. So most likely, most, most cases, your MC is lower than ATC. Right in your first graph, when you produce that the upper half part, MC most most cases most of the time MC is lower than it is. So to follow the governmental regulation, if you set your price equal to MC, and you actually will lose money, because the price lower than ATC in in the elastic range. And you need to make sure your price equal to MC. In that case, you will lose money. Okay, so in that case, okay, government will offer you some financial support, you know, so called self state, self stocks, you know, from a paid by the government. Okay, because the price already lower than ATC. And uh, last thing, okay, one more term again, you just need to remember what is called natural monopoly. If a monopoly has economic scope, you basically natural monopoly just equals a monopoly plus they have economic scope. Okay, there's a, there's a firm, there's a monopoly form is called a natural monopoly. Okay, just memorize this definition. Monopoly, if this firm has economic scope, then the monopoly, then the firm is a called is a called a natural monopoly. This is this is all about the national summer. So let's call any questions. If you, if you guys don't have any questions, we just do maybe 
one practical question. When no questions, let's move on to Let's do a kind of a quiz. Let's practice. Let's do that. Let's do this one. Tuesday the 19th. Tuesday the 19th. Q number one. This is a typical question testing you guys about monopoly. Okay, give you guys maybe 15 minutes. So okay, let's try all these questions. Maybe on the piece of the paper. Okay, after you finish, you can you can send me your, your answer so I can check. So I can check your answer and help you to, to improve your answer. If you... Okay, 15 minutes. Okay, everybody, everybody, let's find your paper. Let's try to finish the first question, first longer question tested in the year of 2019. Okay, the company's name is called Fuel Up and it is a monopoly. It's the only producer of gasoline in a small town. First question, question number A actually is super, super easy, right? Super, super easy. If you just copy, if you just copy down the graph we did on our class now, so you just copy down the graph, you can get for one. Every year, every year is the same. Okay, for the first longer question, if you just able to draw the graph, draw the graph model, the same graph model by yourself, okay, you can get kind of a half mark for the first longer question.
If you finish, you can you can you can send send me your answer.
Yeah, so let's do this together. Yeah, I already mentioned how you guys, how you, how you guys can do the first impression. Basically, you just copy down the, the first, uh, the graph uh, down to here. You can get to the full mark for question. So do this one again. So coordinates is a, so first step, downward slope in the main curve, bisector and marginal review curve. And you just, you need to extend the marginal review curve below the horizontal axis. So you label this one by D, label this one by marginal review. And you find the midpoint, you need to find the midpoint of your main curve. And is it make sure your marginal cast Intersects intersects with the main curve through this midpoint. You find the intersection. You go down. So this is a card QF. You need to follow the follow the requirement with the the question. So you need to label this one by QF. So how you can find PF PF is here. You find the dead we lost, that we lost is here. It was this from like that we lost. The maximum quantity at which few have food or zero economic profit. How you can make a zero economic profit? Okay, that can be happened when your price exactly equal to ATC. And in this graph, demand curve determines the price. So that means you just need to find the intersection of the ATC and the demand curve. So we need to add ATC. Here you find the intersection of the ATC and the demand curve. You Okay, so you label this one by Q. Okay, so this is an answer for question A. So question B, assume that the company's fixed cost increases because they do lease on its property. And then the firm stays in business, which can be, which of the following increase, decrease, or remote change? That is the firm's profit less in quantity. So that we lost. So B number one, how we can find? How we can do B number one? So we can see the dead we lost. We will remain unchanged. Cost. Fix the cost. You not affect either M or N. So, protection. Level. Obviously, the quantity production quantity But that will last me also no change. Okay, but your economic profit for sure view will decrease because of the cost is increasing.
The last question is a question number D. Assume the demand for gasoline decreases because the people buy to work more often. So people, so people, you said the people don't need to buy as much as a gasoline as they did before, because they just uh, bike to work, so they don't need to buy gasoline. So, so demand curve in this graph in this market will decrease. So maybe you are losing money, right? You are losing money. But if you still keep operation, we learn about this. Actually, this one is it has your. Uh, test you guys about testing you guys about to shut down room. Thank you. So P the answer should be P greater than or equal to if you still uh if your operation you you you, you before before you withdraw the market. Okay, so P is still greater than or equal to everything. The last question, you have the demand curve shifts at your left. Okay, those price T will decrease. Okay, so if you finish as a, maybe try another.
The next question we just tried to send the seven question one. Yeah, also is a question about monopoly. As a patent gives investors the exclusive right to produce and uh, market a product for a period of time. So you get something called a patent. So you are a, so legally uh, a monopoly to produce, to produce these specific products during this period of time. So how we do question A, still is the same graph. Yeah, if you can able to still draw the same graph, okay, that is the answer for question A. So let's just try B, C, D together. So how you can guess can do B. What happened is output market price if, if it's a lump sum tax. So lump sum tax want Those M R E okay, so quantity so Q E won't change. But if you, if you need to pay taxes to government, right, your total profit for sure will decrease. This one per unit. Unit steps to view can shift. Maybe we can do can shift. You increase. Price view. So because they producing the elastic range, they lower the price and they can get a financial support paid by government, that the company's profit for sure will increase. The last question in long run. The answer is a profit three, four, two, zero. Because after the first view firms. into the market. Making the industry
So finally, in profit competition, yeah, we just uh, we to do you mention in profit competitive industry, family or the firm money can make a normal profit. Okay, so if uh, so basically the last question would be if we convert the monopoly market back to a profit competition. So finally, everybody once again only can make a normal profit. Okay, the reason to explain to explain the your answer. Because the new firms can enter into the market. Okay, and the homework this week is at 2.30 and 13. Okay, so the number one. For this, for this question, actually, when you do the homework, you don't need to draw the graph by itself because you already got a graph here. Just based on this graph, you can answer all these questions. So this one should be easier. You don't need to draw the graph by yourself. Okay, if you have no questions, that's it.